Uh, I'm going to start with a story that I didn't intend, to, I don't think it fits into looking back or looking ahead, but um, I interviewed Lisa Block uh, last week, and let me tell you who Lisa Block is and why I'm telling you about her. She is uh, a new teacher this year, and I see a couple smiles, so whose children have Lisa this year? Um, okay. Um, so we hired her this year, and she is absolutely just one of the rising stars, great, great teachers. And what's exciting is we hired her uh, because Indian Hill rifted her. And um, so the story begins with Indian Hill rifting one of their best teachers they had. She happened to only be a first year teacher, but just as a natural, as an absolute natural great teacher, right? And so the first thing I tell you is, is that in uh, public schools don't give people, their leaders, the ability to think and make critical decisions. And so they need to slip back to a very strict procedure, in this case seniority, of who's going to teach the children in the future. And so it doesn't matter whether you're the best or the brightest. It matters how long you've been there. Um, and so the first thing I tell you is I'm very proud that when we've had to make hard decisions, we didn't rely on a very bureaucratic procedure. We worked very hard and put ourselves up to great scrutiny of hiring the teachers who we think are going to be the best before your children. And so that's the first thing I'd like to tell you. And so, I interviewed her last week with the admissions office there to talk about the difference between Indian Hill and Country Day. That's where she was teaching. And so um, I say this because I have trouble putting into words what the difference is between a public school and a, and a private school, and most specifically between Indian Hill and Country Day. And so she helped me put it into words. Let me share with you some of my notes that I have uh, from our conversation. So, the first and most obvious is the small classes. And with the small classes, a couple things are happening. Um, the ability to connect with the children. And um, I like to use this, and she used it as well, as there's no hiding at Country Day. <laughs> so she often found children hiding in the back of classes with classes. Um, she taught classes with students between 24 and 26 students. So uh, that was the first thing she said. It continues, this thread continues in terms of the relationship with the students. And she talked about the common relationship that the high school teachers have in public school is that of an authoritarian and solely authoritarian. And just the teacher and imparter of the knowledge and the curriculum. Where here, she's just so excited about being the swim coach, about being involved in the daily life of the children being a, 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 a advisor and so she feels that there's you develop a very different relationship with the children um, than you do in public school um, she had this great story of she was uh, teaching a geometry lesson and it, she was being supervised uh, that class and so the principal was there and it, it went on a little tangent, and she thought it went on this great tangent into uh, some esoteric parts that will be used later, and just a, a, a really great thinking and critical thinking, and it, she thought it was a great class. And uh, at the end of the class, the principal said, that's not on the OGT, you don't have time to teach it. And uh, she would have gotten high fives if she had taught yeah. that lesson here, yeah. right? I mean, Stephanie would have just been like, that was awesome. Um, and so the problem with public education and public education in the state of Ohio is minimum competency standards. So not only do they teach them to a test, a standardized test, which is a right answer standardized test, they're being graded on the minimum. How many people are getting above the bar on the minimum? That's what almost all of the state is pushing and grading you on and pushing the principals and rewarding the principals on where the minimum is. And for us, it's the sky's the limit. Where can we take the children to go 
uh, from there. Um, let's see, her next point, uh, I like this one, this was my favorite one, strong administrative support. <laughs> um, but she talked about the collegial relationship that the administrators have and that they're out and about and that it's not run on a top-down basis. And she talked about um, the software package that she really wanted. It cost eight bucks a, a, a student for bid from getting it. But she had this $50 piece of software that no teacher ever was using, but the administrators thought it was really great to get. And when you have these top-down decision-making, uh, decisions don't get made well. So um, she, she were, those were her words, by the way. I didn't make that up. Um, <laughs> So teachers are uh, important decisions. Um, students have the ability to get one-on-one -on -one help. And I thought at a school like Indian Hill, they would have the ability to get one-on-one -on -one help. Um, it's just not in their schedule the way it is in our schedule in the high school. And so those are important seeds that they're planting. I'm not just doing better in that academic class because of the help, but developing that relationship with a teacher and learning those skills for college of how to engage your teacher, your professor, um, in terms of how to do that outside of class on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, she loves the tablet computer. She's a real, um, and she, um, we all think that the access to the technology is helping the children be more organized, helps them think uh, how do we solve problems in a different way. Um, and so she, she loves the access to the tablets. Um, she talked about the culture of the upper school and how children interact ninth grade to seniors or 10th grade and that there's a real intergrade relationships that you don't see and almost that the, it's cool for the seniors to be mean to the freshmen where that sense of culture isn't there. Um, she ended with two things, is the kind of pull back to the teacher-student relationship, that there's no barriers between the students and the teachers, um, in her mind, that, that there's that closeness, and whether it's uh, manifested itself in separate bathrooms that only the teachers can use, or that the teachers eat in a different dining hall because they really don't want to be near, or, I don't know why, um, so I don't need to make up reasons uh, potentially why. Um, and so you. That creates a culture. And then the uh, culture of the students. It's cool to, cool to care, cool to be a good student, um, cool to be a good citizen is more prevalent, she was saying, here than, than there. Um, so I make this comparison um, and put some words to it that I'm preaching, preaching to the choir here, I realize. Um, but I, I put words to it because often it is hard to describe the cultural aspects of what differentiates us from, from other schools. And so we work really, really hard for the middle and high school children to develop a sense of independence, to develop a sense of freedom, a, a sense of pride and ownership in their education. And so it's, it's these differences then, then allow us to do very different things with our children than um, what's happening in other places. Um, Indian Hill is one of the best schools in the country, so I, I hope it wasn't said as a derogatory, but rather trying to get the sense of the nuances, the differences <coughs> between the two places, because the difference is market. Um, and so it better be market, because um, this is not a cheap uh, undertaking. And so. The difference better be large. And so I think it is, um, and I wanted to be able to articulate with you differences. You can tell I get passionate about this. So. Um, all right, now to looking back, looking ahead. Um, congratulations on enrollment. Enrollment has been off the charts, um, absolutely terrific. We grew from um, 768 students last year to about 815 right now. <coughs> And that's really exciting. Um, and so we had 161 new students uh, last year. And we are on 
as at the end of March, we are exactly on the same pace in terms of contracts in and applications. Um, the one area where we're a little bit behind is in inquiries. And so we're having a better yield inquiry to application than we, we have before. But the one thing I'd like to appeal to this group is we have 74 contracts in. We're, uh, we're budgeting 158 new students. And so you think, okay, we're going into April, we're in the seventh inning or the, the eighth inning. We're really in the fourth inning, okay? We're not even a halftime yet. If, I know baseball doesn't have halftime. <laughs> but, it's the second period. Yeah, it's the second period of hockey. Thank you, uh, the hockey guru. Um, but we still have a lot of work left to do in admissions. So we're, we're running at the right pace, um, but we still have more than half the pace to go. Um, and where you all can help the most, <laughs> is inquiries. Drive people to say, come take a look. Um, come see what the magic is. Just, you have to be able to be here to see some of the differences that I was just talking about. So continue to drive people here. Inquiries, um, and we're doing really well once they get here. Um, they're probably the most satisfying statistic on enrollment is um, we have budgeted 675 returning students, and we're at 669 returning contracts right now, and we're about 41 ahead of where we were last year in terms of returning contracts. And on a percentage basis, because we grew a little bit, but on a percentage basis, we're ahead of people are um, getting their contracts in, and uh, we're in great shape for uh, our retention numbers to be hopefully record setting this year. So that's very, very exciting there. Um, a good problem in a way is we're gonna have wait lists in some classes. Um, so the kindergarten's full, the fourth grade's full, pre-K two is gonna be full, Montessori's gonna be full. Um, so as a businessman, it's terrific um, because my efficiency of running the school with classes, when I talk about full, we're still talking about student-teacher ratios that are the best in the country. But the efficiency of, or the inefficiency of walking into a kindergarten class with seven students, a great atmosphere for those seven, but what it does to the budget is, is very difficult. So um, we're not looking to have large classes, but we're looking to be efficient and not have as many peaks and valleys in our enrollment. Um, I think a, a, a significant factor in our retention is the buddy program. So um, thank you all who's worked tirelessly on the buddy program and how important it is for us to welcome the new families to Country Day because I think we're a very welcoming community. Um, but we have to, to be conscious about that. I don't think that that just happens. Um, I think we have great families and so it does happen naturally but I think we need to be systematized about how we pull people into our community, make them feel welcome, um, and not feel intimidated or whatever the other things would be that would prohibit them from entering our community. So I think the Buddy Program's done a terrific job with that. And I think when the parents feel comfortable <coughs> and part of the community, I think it's easier to teach the children. So I actually. Not only does it help with attrition, it creates a much better environment for our children. Uh, I've met with the Indian Hill Rangers, um, and uh, they've been working on new lockdown plans. And um, the lockdown is if our school were violated or infiltrated with um, a gunman or anything else. And it, this is nervous things to talk about. Um, I get the chills just talking about it, and the responsibility that I have um, for 800 children is, is immense. And so we do need to spend behind the scenes hours talking about what if, what if, what if, what do you do, where do we go. Um, and so we're, we're making the, the, at the Rangers research, um, after watching some of these just disasters, um, we're making some major shifts 
to what our protocols are. And so our protocols have been, if there have been a, a gunman that has come into our, our building, we go into a lockdown and you would hide in a hard corner um, and wait until you were told to come out. Um, after reviewing the tapes of Columbine and a, a girl in the library saying, well, shouldn't we just run? When uh, people just stayed and waited, um, we're going to change the protocol to that of if you're in a safe area where you can move away from the danger in a safe way, the teachers will guide that through. If you're um, in a room with older children and someone comes in, throw things at that person and uh, disarm them, don't s sit there as a sitting duck. The difficulty for our campus is immense. It's a bird. It's a bird. Um, <laughs> a flying duck. It's a sign. The, uh, the complexity for our, our, our campus is immense because it's clear what a senior would do. Um, it's, you know, it, it, it gets hard to think about how much do you change the house? Um, I think the middle ground is the middle school again. What fifth and sixth graders can be expected to do is probably different from what seventh and eighth graders can be uh, expected to do. And so we're going to be working through all of this, and I didn't mean to create, I can just see body language changing. Um, I'm a parent, I feel the body language. And so, um, but know that we're changing the protocol, that we spend a lot of time on issues like this. And it, it's, uh, when I signed up for the job, I didn't think that that was such issues. Um, when I started, there weren't, that wasn't part of school leadership. It is now. Um, and we take it very seriously. Um, so we have a, a tough couple weeks now for us to figure out <coughs> exactly the guidance from the Indian Hill Rangers to but what does a fourth grade class do differently from a seventh grade class where the earlier commands, particularly for lower school teachers, just tell me what to do and I'll, I'll do exactly that. And now what we're saying is local information is a little bit better than what we can tell you as an overall protocol. Um, and so some decisions are going to have to be made at that moment. Um, and that's a that's going to be an intimidating thing that we're going to work on with our faculty because that's not an easy challenge to, to give them. I think with the earlier, the younger children, the challenge um, of being told exactly what to do, exactly hide in this corner and practice hiding in this corner and do it every time is more assuring than, well, you're going to have to assess the situation and we have communication ways to try to help to communicate but who knows what's happening, um, and you're going to have some options. So that's going to be a shift for us. Um, but I just wanted to share with you that, that we do do a lot of behind-the-scenes work on, on things like that. And finally, um, <coughs> I wanted to give you a pre This is only a preview. I've got about three minutes left of, of time of what we're doing with the, the building projects at Country Day. We've uh, had a master planning committee for about a year and we've been talking about the entire campus and we've prioritized um, the specific corner of campus by where you drop uh, the children off for, for lower school. Um, and it, the, the prioritization has been very difficult. I'm talking to you about a lot of difficult decisions today. Um, the early childhood house needs attention. There's some other things that need attention as well. Um, but we're going to focus on um, the lower school, and um, this summer we've already committed to about a million dollars of work on the roof, windows, and HVAC, um, and we've made commitments to do that, and we've raised that amount of money already to pay for the windows, roof, and HVAC. Um, they, uh, the trustees were here on, on Monday, and I don't know if you remember, we had a really big uh, rainstorm Sunday night. And so right outside of Jenna Kino's office was the uh, leaking roof for the bucket right there. There was, there was cries of foul play there. Because <laughs> um, uh, 
the, the, the trustees were like, we've already committed to it. You don't need to show me anymore. Right? Um, so the, the roof won't bring um, great visual satisfaction, um, but it will keep, uh, th it's, a, it's a long, long overdue project. The windows are going to be incredible. Um, what it's going to do um, for the school is amazing. The HVAC is just, again, long overdue. Um, and so the temperatures will be more consistent. The airflow and things like that will be, will be great. Um, so we're committed to that already. Um, we're getting very far along in the fundraising for the right tennis complex. And um, these pictures I know you can't see from the back. I'm going to leave them up. And um, you can come look at them at the end of the meeting. And then, um, so, and then I'll announce this and then tell you more about the project. We're going to be, I'll be sending a letter to all of the parents this evening after I meet with the lower school faculty this afternoon that will invite lower school parents and any upper school parents to come in, <coughs> but we're targeting the lower school and information <coughs> session. So we'll be doing the lower school by grade and starting with the uh, pre-primary, which will bring our um, the house and uh, the pre-Ks, both Montessori and uh, regular pre-Ks, then we'll go up through the grades, and so we'll have seven grade level meetings and then two open meetings in case those two don't match. So we're going to have nine information meetings where we're going to go over the plans, and um, the plans are still very much the, the <coughs> renovate, so I'm skipping around, I apologize. So. The tennis court, let me do that, and then we'll talk about uh, the tennis courts are currently, we have five tennis courts that used to go, that go along here. We're reclaiming a significant, about a court and a half worth of land for the lower school. There's, the lower school is really short on flat grass area, and so we're going to get about a court and a half worth of playground here for the lower school, which is really exciting for the lower school. We're going to expand the tennis from five courts to seven courts, which um, helps on our participation and more children get to play and practice uh, during that time. We'll move the softball field over, um, either over here or to the middle school field and uh, share the, the, the varsity middle school can share the field there. Um, so that, that we're pretty far along with the fundraising. Um, and the, we already have a lead donor, the, the, um, so uh, it will be called the Wright uh, Tennis Complex, which is exciting. Um, and then the project that we're working on, that's the second phase of the repairs. And so we've committed to the repairs that we're going to do this summer while your children are um, away for the summer, and we figured out how to work with the, the summer programs uh, <coughs> while the repairs are being done. Um, the second phase of this, which we're uh, just beginning the fundraising for, but I'd like to share with you the early ideas are for us to build a new entrance to the uh, lower school. Um, the lower school pretty much is a door at the end of a corridor um, with no sense of arrival. And so back to the, to the security issues that I need the principal's office or the head of school's office to be at the front. Um, I need um, administrators to greet you as you come in. Um, and so we are planning to do that. 